location. It's time right, to get I got on us the live right on that. Go ahead. Right Facebook. Real Estate Radio with Jason Bible. Get the answer to your question. And Nikki that's also tells when our mics are hot over the radio. Today. They're always hot for Facebook. Okay. So easy with their phones. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> This is a uh, family channel. Yeah, it is. It is. It is a Christian business station. <laughs> Get ready. The guy that All right, will fellas, put your stand fears by. behind you is on the air now. Hot mics Taking calls at 713-785-1817. Toll free, 877 881 Now here's your host, Jason Bible. Jason. Welcome to the show. Welcome to the show. Jason Bible, Right Path Real Estate. It's Interview and Investor Friday. And I've got uh, Alex Cedillo with me. He's a wholesaler, flipper. Alex, you've been doing this for like, what, 20 years now? Almost yeah, 20 years? No, uh, yeah, 18 years, December. 18, so next month. So next month, he'll be doing this 18 years. So uh, he's just going to come in the studio with us and, and just share some stories. So let's, let's talk about year one. How'd you get into real estate? What were you doing before? What was that process like? It was it was uh, it was very interesting. There's a lot of spoiled guys and gals in today's market because they can find so much stuff on the internet, mm. um, YouTube. There's a guru born every day mm-hmm. out there, you know, that's maybe done one or two deals, and all of a sudden they're yeah, they're, they're teaching there education. Yeah, it's yeah. kind of crazy. <laughs> but um, yeah, I started back uh, in uh, the end of '99. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'm coming from the corporate environment. I was a, a licensed insurance broker for life and health, uh, group health benefits. Okay. And so I was providing that kind of stuff. And uh, I was always trying to figure out a way to, because uh, if you think about it with insurance, I know Tom's got license. Yeah, he's well an insurance guy. Yep. So for me, it was like, you know, you get, you know, salaried, you'd get commissioned, mm-hmm. and then there's that residual income mm-hmm. from the policies and whatnot. So that was pretty cool. Uh, I've always been trying to develop my own skills, my growth. Both, you know, my mindset, that kind of thing, uh, and reading a lot of uh, books like Anthony Robbins and whatnot. So mm-hmm. there was, uh, I started reading biographies and autobiographies and whatnot to see how other people succeeded and kind of what their story was about, that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And uh, and I found out that there was a few of them that actually had their hand in the cookie jar with real estate. And mm-hmm. so I guess the light bulb kind of clicked, and I started doing some research. I found the Rich Club, mm-hmm. so I became a member of the Rich Club. I started trying to do my homework, research, network, that kind of thing. Which Rich, Rich Club has a meeting this weekend. Yes. So if you guys want to go to Rich Club, it'll be Saturday morning. What the, do you remember what time they start? I think it's like 9 o'clock in the morning, something like that. And they'll have a, it'll be a full af- uh, morning of, of stuff going on. So you became a member of Rich Club. Yes. Became a member of Rich Club. And then I just started the, the business. I started learning and understanding. Uh, of course, like most people today, they're afraid. They don't want to spend not even 500 bucks. They wonder if they're going to get that back. Mm-hmm. You know, back then they were doing the training programs and what they had was, uh, you know, 15, 20 pages. Uh, you remember Dennis Orocho? Mm-hmm. Okay. He was one of my first mentors and mm-hmm. he was basically like the best, one of the best out of the other guys that I've mm-hmm. learned from out of, you know, 18 years. Yeah. I can literally count on my hands, the guys that I really respect, mm-hmm. uh, that gave real value and the training uh, out there in this business today. Mm -hmm. I mean, from today and all these years, the money I've spent. You know what's so funny is, since you've been doing this so long, you see the... the kind of the fakers if you will the industry yeah. when when you sit there in the back of the room and there's always a new national guy that blows into town right it's yeah. like houston's a real estate so yeah. hot yeah. so you sit there tom and i go to these things all the time and we sit there at the back of the room and you hear the sales pitch for their seminar yeah it's like that doesn't work like yeah. i don't what you're trying to not teach. in texas no yeah <laughs> or or my favorite is the short sale and the foreclosure guy right that, yeah. that flies in and i'm like that doesn't really work here. <laughs> yeah. Different rules. Different yeah, rules. yeah, different rules yeah. and all that. So anyways, it, you, you were saying join in Rich Club and, and check it all that out. And uh, yeah, so I joined Rich Club and then um, I'd probably say into my second years when I actually met Dennis Orocho. Okay. He was doing his training program, mentoring and whatnot. And I paid uh, my 500 bucks to get started with him. And he mm-hmm. had like 15 pages or whatever it was. I think it was about 18 pages or something like that stapled together the kind of thing, kind of manual, whatever mm-hmm. you want to call it. And we had it at a restaurant. So I think I was at his first or second ever event that he'd ever had. And we were at, at, at one of the restaurants over in Pasadena. Oh, that's funny. And uh, there was probably, let's see, there was about two or three pages at the very end that was blank. 
Mm-hmm. So I was like, Dennis, there's something wrong with your printer. I'm missing some pages. You know, he goes, Oh no, that's for your notes. I'm like, Oh crap. <laughs> <laughs> we did, you know, when we did our first uh, two classes, we did. We would have all of the slides on the left. You know, it was like you open it up in a book, right? Yeah. And the left hand page has all the slides on it. Yes. And then the right hand is blank, and they right. say. Why is it blank? I'm like, well, most people are right-handed. Just start writing the notes, and they go, "That's genius." <laughs> Have you? Okay. I've seen that. Yeah, I've you're seen like, that. how do you write notes if there's stuff written on the right hand of the page? So yeah, anyway, yeah, exactly. All right, so you're taking this class uh, from him, and then what? What kind of happened next? Well, one of the things that I learned about the business was really uh, my biggest. For me, the biggest fear for for me was the contracts mm. and estimating repairs. Because I wasn't a contractor, even though I had some experience doing sheetrock, that kind of thing. But from a pricing standpoint Mm -hmm. uh, and estimating, I didn't really understand that. I didn't know. Uh, The contracts, definitely fearful. I thought you had to have an attorney. I'm like, I'm going to be broke before I even get started. (laughs) Because you have to have an an attorney to fill out contracts, to read them, review them, get them back to you. You know, I had so many people talk about this stuff. When in fact, I mean, all you got to do is read the damn thing and understand. That yeah, there's nothing. It's a tr- we use a Trek one to four. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know what you guys use, but I do use those. Too. You use a Trek. One. Okay, yeah. so you go through and read it, and it's like it's really basic. And one of the things I was all I'm always worried about is you go to buy a house and you give them a contract that's not a Trek one to four, and then they're like, "Well, my attorney needs to review it." Yes, and I'm totally cool with that. But if it's a not if it's not a Trek one to four, then yeah. the attorney will you know put out a ton of billable hours yeah. as opposed to a trek one to four they just look at it and go yes yeah, it's like standard real estate yeah. contract you want me to read it to you yeah so uh yeah the contracts can be a little tricky depending on what you're doing i i, I use the trek on certain scenarios when mm-hmm. i know it's going to be a short sale automatic if yeah it's going to be an elderly person it's mm-hmm. going to be an automatic because usually you have used those treks and you're talking to a seller and they say they're going to use this. Well, they're already behind on payment. You have no attorney. You're not going to yeah, hire an attorney true, to yeah. review it. So then how about if I just use this one pager or two pager, yeah. look at this and look at it. It basically spells out the details. Mm-hmm. There's no difference in this. And I pitched the, the trek is it's state. It's yeah. not my attorney's document. It's not your attorney's document. And it basically protects both the seller as well as the buyer. Mm-hmm. So that's all it is. And then so I... I when I give them that ease of understanding, then yeah. they're like, eh, okay, that's fine. Just, let's go ahead and use this other one. Yeah. Let's just simplify it. I mean, I've even had guys, sellers on commercial, mm-hmm. um, where the guy, I mean, I did a one-pager, and he still was like, just write it on a piece of paper and just say you want to buy it for this price and I'll sell it for this price, and that's it. He mm. was afraid of the contract. Mm. I didn't understand that, but, yeah. you know, to each is their own. Yeah, yeah, and, it, you know, in, in uh, there are certain cases where those little one two pagers make sense, mm-hmm. but uh, wh- one area you kind of run afoul is that uh, you know the the contract the Trek one to four directs the title company to do certain things. Correct. So you just got to have kind of a conversation with the title company. Hey, we're doing this and that. So in any case, you're going through this training. Uh, you're at Rich Club, and then what's the point at which you get into real estate? When do you make like the the plunge, if you will? Well. In the beginning, as you know, there wasn't as much stuff as there is today yeah. back then. So, I, again, I was still afraid of the contract. So, mm-hmm. I went out and I got burnt by a couple of, you know, uh, end buyers or rehabbers or whatever mm-hmm. you want to call it, where I brought them to the table. They were supposed to give me an assignment without doing the assignment because mm-hmm. I was afraid of the, co- you know, we didn't have assignment documents right, right. back then. None of that stuff. It was just and or science type thing. Uh, so when I did that, for the most part, it was uh, um, the, the uh, that buyer actually got burned twice. And then my first deal, technically, my third deal would have been that I got paid uh, $800. So you're assignment. trying to wholesale those deals, get yeah. cut out of the deal at the closing yeah. table because you you had no legal framework to kind of yeah. beat the beat the buyer up, yeah. so to speak, exactly. with that. So third deal, you make uh, 800 bucks. So what is that what's an $800 deal look like? Can you can you walk us through what that looked like way back almost 20 years ago? <laughs> <laughs> um, basically uh, $800 for the amount of time that I put it in. I went and did the learned about the contracts. Mm-hmm. Uh, of course, I learned uh, about the trek. So I used the trek. I understood mm-hmm. 
after repeating, 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 and just writing multiple, and I asked Dennis, I said, give me a case scenario, give me a case study or something, give me some kind of an analogy or something that I can sit there and structure a contract and bring them to you with. Mm -hmm. And so I, after taking the class, I understood that, and then I started piecing these together. Repetition is the mother of skill. That's so right. That was for for the for me. It was very powerful, and that I was able to do that with Dennis. And he was like, "Yeah, okay, well, this is probably what I would do." Or you know, mm -hmm. why did you think about this? And and right away, I picked it up pretty fast, and I just I started getting really really good at wholesaling. Yeah, so we uh, it, with, when working with our mastermind folks. You know, we're, <clears throat> you really have two skill sets in this business, marketing and sales, right? So marketing is pretty easy. That's really a consistency issue. It's actually a discipline is really where they kind of yes. fall apart. Yes. And then the, the second issue is is developing a sales skill set. And the only way to develop that sales skill set is talk to a lot of sellers, exactly. right? It just, that's part of the I say part that the all the time. Yeah. You got to get in front of people. You got to get, get on the phone, set the appointment, worry mm -hmm. about the details later, get out there because mm -hmm. one way or the other, you're going to learn from that, that experience. That's right. That's right. Yeah. And one of our favorite uh, mottos is if you're not earning, you're learning. That's it. That's it. <laughs> so, and there's a lot of learning that takes place on the front end. So uh, when we get back from the break, I want to talk more about your best deal, worst deal, lessons learned, quirky stories. Everyone's got crazy stories that are appropriate for the radio. <laughs> that's, uh, that's always the most important piece, piece that are important for the, uh, uh, that work for the radio. This is Jason Bible with Right Path Real Estate. We'll be back with uh, Alex Cedillo. Mics off. All right, so the mics are still yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the mics are still live Investor for Facebook. Investor loans offering so. up to one hundred percent financing are still available. You just have to know where to I've look. I've got a friend of mine Look that no I want to put on. Than Nova yeah. And I'm so worried bringing them on. Company. It's, it's like been helping there's, investors no since there's no filter. There's no filter. Nikki's going to have to be on the dump button. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. that covers I imagine halfway through it's like, hey, look, we. In this addition interview's to over just because of the fact that there's too many bleeps, right? FHA, so, and even is there not no like a, income uh, um, documentation loans a delay? for both residential Two second, three and seconds. Yeah, there is, but I think you... Hey, Nikki, do you eat that delay up which whenever you bleep them? Free pre-qualifications oh, within two business when I, days. Call 713-680-8100 or visit noblemoney.com. But when you hear on air, it'll just be years experience in the mobile industry. Call us today, 713-680-8100 or visit us on the web, noblemoney.com. You see the music video, but there's no lyrics. Kind of like a Chinese movie. Did you know yeah, they that all, there are over oh, they're still talking, but they're not making any sound. You're like, what is going on? In the U.S., <laughs> imagine if you could use someone's IRA to fund all of your deals. Well, you can. Quest oh, IRA is based locally here in Houston, Anne Texas. Anne Marie, the voice Quest of Quest. IRA, we offer retirement accounts that can be used to invest in real estate, promissory notes, private entities, and much more. Many of our clients loan yeah, money from their IRAs to fund well, real estate deals for right all now. over the country. I'm the Facebook we don't feed. sell any investments or give advice. I don't However, see we do yet. hold free networking we'll have to put events, a weekly out there. educational classes, so, all right, guys, and free consultations call in with, your tough with an questions. IRA specialist. Now, for of course, more information, I'll, I'll never visit get. First time I was on the radio, I was doing case study over at Lifestyles, at yeah. and I was on the radio show Fund IRAs with Jeff Smith to tap and into the twenty-four trillion dollars in retirement accounts in the U.S. Maybe this is my IRA this is my second house I bought ever. Fund so IRAs this dude calls in. Website, First question. IRA. Hey guys, what's going on? Hey, doing great. The Realty Investment like, hey, Club Bob Houston has taught more right, Bob, real estate so investors than any well, other program in the state. Well, I'm doing a fire burn house, out. and the city's claiming that I need to bring in a structural engineer to, real to real estate, ensure that the foundation wasn't damaged by fire and X, Y, and Z. And I'm like, I look at Jeff, and I'm like, we're not just another guru-driven club. Sounds like that's what you ought to do. Call a structural engineer, right? It's like investors join. In our community. They're like, is that really what I need to do? I said, well, the city's telling you to do it. Visit richradio.org. Well, I probably would go do it. So, <laughs> radio. Yeah, what can't question. get around that. Looking yeah. for great answers to your financial yeah, you have questions? Tune in and, uh, weekday you mornings have to have from eight to nine and engineer, for Straight Talk Money, hosted by this, Mike right. Robertson. No hype, no infomercials, just plain talk to give you the information you need to make you a better investor. We may not hey, be I able to call. control the future, but you know, we can learn to control how it impacts mm -hmm. us. Listen to Straight Talk Money, hosted by Mike Robertson, weekdays 8 to 9 a.m. on Business 1110 KTE. 
what? Day. Can I do a plug in on that? Better one? education. Yeah, sure. sure. Tuesday. Tuesday uh, uh, at, these are the pillars. Next week, that Tuesday. Dr. I'm Ryan next Tuesday. Yeah, I'm just doing a free for a solid community. So I've been directing Ryan people just to go to meet up because that's where all the events are posted these days. Yeah, go ahead. They want to see the man. Where's it at? Serving you. Learn it's more about be, the evolution uh, of his conservative values and work ethic online at Brian Chu uh, for Texas. You know the guys at Carrington Support Dr. Brian yeah. Chu for I'm the Texas House District 149. Learn more at Brian Chu for Texas.com. Interesting. Get ready. Yeah. How big is the conference room up there? It's probably, is here. I mean, it's actually a decent with me, size, Every yeah. show but it's going to be probably about, I think I'm going to just do where I'm about 30 seats. I don't expect that many to show up, obviously, because it's going to be in the morning. It'll be like from 930 to 11. Man, I'll tell they got a whiteboard. They got everything set up. I'll tell you, a friend of mine Secrets started of doing this meetup me, group Luke in Katy. Right yeah. here on Business Newsmakers Radio. We, Join Luke we went to the first one. Actually, we were speaking at this one. Stand by, guys. It was only 60 people there. This is business. 1110. He's out the hall. It's crazy. All right, Jay. Hot mics. Five, four, three, two, one. Boom. Welcome back. Jason Bible, Right Path Real Estate. I'm here with Alex Cedillo. We've got a couple decades here, mostly with Alex, to be quite honest, because I've only been doing this for a couple of years. Thanks, Jason. But uh, uh, we got a couple decades of uh, real estate experience here. So if you've got a burning question, I highly recommend that you give us a call. 713-785-1817. You guys on Facebook can also ask questions. I'm sitting here watching it while Alex is talking. So let's talk about... Uh, Best deal, worst deal. What was the worst deal you've ever done? Whether uh, now, when I say worst, like you either lost a lot of money yeah. or it was just a I nightmare. Know that's it. Okay, <laughs> it was all, or it was a nightmare to manage. We right. had Quincy in here one day, and Quincy was telling the story about one of the worst deals he did, but he ended up making money on it. It yeah. was just the whole process was a nightmare. Yeah. So I've what, had a couple of those for so, the most part. So what when I when I tell you when I ask for a worst case like worst deal you've ever done, what what's the first one that comes to mind? Well, the one that comes to mind was a high-end deal, uh, what I considered a high-end deal back then. This was in like 04, 05, mm-hmm. uh, and it mm-hmm. was over there off of Memorial and Richmond. Okay. Uh, Memorial, I'm sorry, uh, Memorial and Shepherd, uh, Washington, Okay. over there in that area, mm-hmm. that little corridor area. So I found a deal, uh, turned around, and it was a subject to... Went to, I mean, it was just from one thing to the next. So it was a, always just tight. So a sub two, for those of you who are new to show, you're buying a house subject to the existing mortgage. The easiest way to say it is you're 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 buying the house while taking over the current mortgagee's exactly. payments. Yes. So All right. So you were buying this thing sub two. So I was buying the thing sub two. Uh, the person was, the owner was uh, out of state and okay. it, was a, it was a higher end house over <clears throat> there. Needed some remodel, whatnot. Mm-hmm. Uh, I bought it, paid, wired, funded, everything, so that way we brought it current, and then the bank had foreclosed on the property. Holy cow. Okay, so when you're buying sub two, a lot of times folks are in arrears, right? Could be, yes. so they may have missed a month's worth of payment, two months, three months, four, uh, uh, six months, a year, whatever the yeah. number is. They may miss a lot of payments. So when you buy a house subject to, you've got to do two things. One is you've got to close, obviously, the title company, get title insurance, right. all, and there's a bunch of disclosures you have to do for sub two deals. And then the second thing you've got to do pretty quickly is pay off all of the fees and all the arrearages, all that stuff to get the mortgage current. Otherwise, you go into foreclosure. Right. So how did right. this thing sneak into foreclosure while you were closing on it? Well, I, that I'm not sure exactly mm-hmm. because they told me when it had to be in by this time. We wired it, had the, the, the confirmation number, everything. Everything was done through title. Everything was done properly. But they the, the owner had called me and told me, hey, um, somebody called me and said that they foreclosed on the property and these are the new owners. Do you know who these guys are? I'm like, I have no idea. I'm like, do you got their number? Mm -hmm. And so she gave me the number. I called them. They're like, yeah, we bought the house. I'm like, "Uh, no, you didn't. And they're like, yeah, we bought it at the courthouse steps. And I'm like, hold on a minute. Yeah. Because it's like, I want my money back right away. Yeah, yeah. And then so I called the bank. And, uh, of course, I threatened them. I'm like, you better jump quick or else here goes my attorney number and then i'll file it this that and other i said because we agreed on this i got my documents i forwarded it i gave them confirmation number Mm -hmm. everything and then so they went back and then they actually retracted that foreclosure really retracted that foreclosure gave me the house well not to me but put it back in the owner's name that kind of Uh. thing retracted it got them out of the way that kind of thing now 
That wasn't the worst part of it, obviously. So I went in, I started the rehab, gave her money. She went on about her own life and business and whatnot. So I put a lot of money into this deal because it was a higher end deal, mm-hmm. higher end finishes, this, that, the other long, longer days on the market. Mm-hmm. And here comes this woman. I decided I'm going to sit there and sell it. I mean, uh, uh, owner finance it. Uh, but it's going to be on a lease option. Back then, obviously, we could still do some lease options, lease mm-hmm. purchases and whatnot. So it was going to be a tenancy first. Mm-hmm. So they got in. I was going through some challenges with my family members in California, mm-hmm. and I was already pretty much packed, ready to go, going. She came, comes in in a two-piece suit, you know, comes from Arizona, whatever, driving a nice little sporty BMW yeah. two-seater. <laughs> I'm like, they got money, you mm-hmm. know? This was the mentality that I didn't yeah. understand for uh, landlording, and I thought, well, okay, so if she's driving a nice car, this, that, and the other... You know, she's going to be a great tenant. Oh, I don't have yeah. to worry about, you know, everything else, yeah. like the hardship areas. That right, kind of thing. right, right. So I thought this was going to be a pretty good deal. Well, mm. I was so busy, never uh, deposited that check. Then oh, the her, uh, her, her uh, initial deposit, deposit yeah, and, yeah. and rent and whatnot. And then the second month, I guess she's like, well, he never cashed this other one. I'll just redo another check. Mm. So she sent me like two, uh, I had like about four checks. They all bounced, obviously. Wow, yeah. So I never even got my first initial monies. Mm-hmm. I didn't really understand the timeline. I couldn't find somebody. I was over there dealing with my uncle. He had some health conditions. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's kind of like my father figure. And so uh, dealing with that, I lost basically about 60 grand on that deal. Oh, wow. So I had to give that back to another investor. Talk to another investor. Have him. He's like, man, I love doing business with you. I'm like, yeah, I bet you. Yeah, do. I bet you do. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, it was amazing. One of the first houses I ever rented. This woman pulls up to rent the house in uh, it was a some kind of seven series BMW. Is a few years old. Yeah. And easily the car was worth more than the house she was going to rent. I oh, mean, wow. it wasn't even close. Wow. And she comes in and starts negotiating with the uh, you know on the rent. And I said, no, this isn't negotiable. <laughs> you know. And, it's, and then of course I look outside and I'm like, you could sell that car and buy this house. I mean, what? So it's it's fascinating when you get the you wow. know it's that thirty thousand dollar millionaire mentality. Right, right. Um, I could tell a couple of stories like that, especially doing high, higher end rehabs, you know, above the median home price, uh, working with folks that have got all kinds of toys but no cash in the bank, in yeah. the bank, and yeah. it's kind of sad. Yeah. So that was that was your worst deal. So what about best deal? You know, one you made the most money on, the made you, you know, one that was the easiest to do. One things, one of the things I found is the deals we do the the best on are usually the easier deals. Yeah. So what are, they just yeah. kind of. It's just kind of sail into your pipeline, and then you do what you need to do to them. You know, rent them or flip them, or whatever, and then they just kind of sail back out the other end. It's pretty sweet. There were, for me, there was a couple of them that were big deals mm-hmm. that I, I did very good on. Uh, the easiest one was basically a wholesale deal. Mm-hmm. I locked it up on the contract. I was knocking on doors. <clears throat> I was looking at a pre foreclosure. I went knocking on doors so, in a certain area. Door knocking does work. Oh, I tell people door knocking works. That's some of the fattest money you can make. Yeah, and it's seriously. And it's you, when you knock on doors. It's not like one day it doesn't work, and then it just I'm not going to do it anymore. You got to be consistent, like all your marketing, yeah. right? Got to be consistent. Exactly. All right, so you're out there doing pre foreclosure, knocking on doors. And so I was doing that. I was looking at the other houses in the area, and there was another house that looked like it was abandoned. It looked mm-hmm. like you know, nice, clean, but nobody lives there. Mm-hmm. Shades drawn, all that kind of stuff. So I went and I put a sign on the door. I mean, a flyer and a, 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 a business card on the door. Mm-hmm. And then this other uh, lady pulls up for the house next door. Two story, big house, mm-hmm. that kind of thing. And uh, she says, "Well, I'm interested in selling my house." I'm like, "Okay." Well, it just so <laughs> happens I'm here. I can help. <laughs> So that one, basically $20, put it under contract as an assignment. I had no idea what I was doing because this was a hiring house. Mm -hmm. Uh, And uh, this one, to this day, we stayed friends. This was back when. We always talked. She was an older woman, did the Trek contract, did everything, explained everything. Very nice woman. She's referred me business. I'm always cutting her checks and stuff like that. And she's just wonderful, wonderful uh, uh, seller experience. Uh, But that one... Locked it up under contract to sign that one, made fifty thousand bucks in a couple months. That's that's by nice. the time the closing and everything yeah, else yeah. done. That was a nice deal. Now that one, I say that from the easiest standpoint for a big mm-hmm. check, especially back then when you're making that kind of money for an assignment. When the typical assignment fee was like you were a badass if at 
three thousand dollars back. Then yeah, yeah. If you were signing that, because usually we were like give or take a thousand bucks, two thousand yeah. bucks, fifteen hundred bucks, something 50 like that. Fifty grand on assignment is yeah. pretty meaty. Yeah, that is, is that's pretty big. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think average assignment fees we're seeing here in Houston somewhere between seventy five hundred, maybe yeah. nine grand. That's yeah. that's about, and a lot of those are landlord deals where they're paying right, right. eighty and eighty five percent. Right, right. So, what if you were to do this all over again, or if you're a new investor, what would you have done differently early on, knowing what you know now? Jumped in with both feet. Jumped in, oh just, to a to a degree. Yeah. And the, the the reason why I say that is because. Uh, it depends on your your risk tolerance. It depends on your resources, your financial situation, whether you're working, whether you enjoy your job or not, and you want to part time this or not. You know, it really depends on the goal. Because initially, I got into this only for the purpose of I lost about sixty percent of my four hundred one k back when. Mm-hmm. And so I'm in the corporate environment. I lost that. I lost my stock money. Got a check back for three dollars and eighty three cents. Mm. So I wanted to pretty much choke that guy and yeah it's like never saw him again definitely yeah but so hard, it's hard to lose that uh, from a percentage standpoint it's hard to lose that much money in a house even yeah. the deal yes. you lost even the deal you lost 60 grand in yeah i mean what was the arv on that house back then three four hundred thousand yeah that was at about three hundred eighty thousand. so the worst deal you ever did you lost maybe sixty thousand bucks on versus now that's the, a combination of equity plus the fix up and, okay and plus the pay, fix up, and, yeah and then i you know paid uh, about 15 months in arrears, mm-hmm. brought that current, all that kind of stuff. But that's nothing compared to the amount of money that you can lose in the stock market. Yes. I mean, it just... it That it, hurts. <laughs> that's what people don't understand. They're like, real estate has a lot of risk. I'm like, are you sure? Yeah. There is. It's nothing compared yeah. to some of this other stuff no. out there. I mean, worse, we, we were having this conversation with a, with a lender on Monday, and I was like, you know, worst case scenario is we just turn around and rent these things. Yes, I mean, exactly. and then we make money when we rent them, yeah. and then you just wait till the market comes back, and then you sell them, and you make all your as money long back. As you, I mean, and I've always said this: as long as you stay, and I've been very fortunate and blessed in that, uh, being in this business for as long as I have, I've always stuck to my numbers on the buy side. Mm-hmm. So it doesn't matter if it's a rental for me; I've always stayed at my business model for my margin on my numbers. Always, always, always. So then I always have one, two, three, four, five different exit strategies on mm-hmm. the back end. Yeah, and I don't think most people realize how incredibly smart that is the yeah. way to because we do the exact same thing yeah. in our business you buy them deep enough you've got all kinds of exit strategies the problem is is that most investors don't right they pay, they get they're like i gotta have a deal and they buy this thing and they're like there's only one exit and yeah. it, they're just they get hammered by the market yeah. from it one so minute. it's uh it's a tough way to be successful in this business all right so i've got some questions here over facebook we've got a minute left so we'll go ahead and go to break. I'm here with uh, Alex Sadio, a.k.a. Mr. Deeds. Uh, so this is Jason Bible with Right Path Real Estate, and we'll see you on the other side of the break. Mike's off. Oh, man. Yeah, that's that's uh, that's interesting you Are say you that. Are you expecting to close accurately on oh. time yeah. and with lots of <laughs> no, communication on your home purchase? Um, You've come to the right place. Are, um, I'm Jennifer Hernandez, Senior uh, Loan the, Officer the, with Legacy this, this Mutual training Mortgage. Training stuff that they're our teaching, goal is to give our borrowers and referral methods, partners an amazing yeah. experience you know, during the loan California, process. Was over My there, team believes in putting people and culture before results. Our company concentrates on building those teams to offer structure, process, and recognition for Fifty dollars a month, yep. but you're a millionaire. You. This yeah, way, we yeah. have the you energy to make this your best well. And I know it works like that in ever. California, Give certain parts of New York, where the real estate is so expensive. It's, to get it's negative carry, and, and then Hernandez, and then bank on the, the appreciation on the back end. I'm like, Legacy that's Mutual speculation, guys. Exactly. That doesn't work. Um, of course, you'll find all these people that say it does work, but then it's like it doesn't. Not a good way to run the business, Again, right? Because then what happens when the market collapses? Com, the real which, market, yeah, which is what happened, and a lot of soon. people got burned. NMLS five one four four nine seven. Equal housing. <laughs> oh, I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure. NMLS five one four four nine. We finally did our From first Tom short sale Galveston, deal. Orange I closed it Monday. Was it Monday? 
Texas Monday General Friday. Insurance I can't remember. Agency is really? trusted closed by it, individuals closed and businesses it this week, our first one ever. Great state of so how long did it take you Whether to do you're searching I don't know. We had an agent do it. Tom was working on it. It was probably... For a Galveston Beach property so or there were processing. For your I bet, yeah. Yeah, I bet it was two, three months, your unique need. which I yeah. thought was kind of fast. But they may have been in that process a lot longer. Associated with You know, working with that real estate agent. So, it's a great deal. Deal. We're going to flip it. A little house sugar land. Allows them yeah. to so, multiple one thing, one thing I'll, I'll say is, is, is a good best possible nugget. value. Texas General Insurance Agency appreciates niche. the opportunity to learn how they house. can work That's for it. you. The ones Call that don't their fit the, 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 agents the, today the, at 713 Whether they need permits, they're not habitable, they yeah. got mold, they got whatever it is. Those ugly ones are the best ones to do because those are the easiest ones. Other than that, they want retail. Are you looking for well, an investor Well, and they're going to they're gonna get it, right? And that's what, when we have conversations call, about doing truck sales, that's what, I mean, what's a condition house? I mean, it needs to be falling in on itself. This thing's a $20 square foot. Or reach us on the web at Fast Track Remodeling specializes in rehab. turnkey oh, wow. remodeling it's a big one. single family yeah. investment yeah. properties, everything. whether it's a flip, uh, rehab, or a In fact, we got Fast Track rehab. doing it. I think it's going to no end up being about 45, 50K in rehab. No more doing the work rehab. yourself. Oh, wow. okay. Fast Track Remodeling house. House. does manage it all. Uh, so give us a call today at 832 I thought it was 160. I looked at some other comps. I think it's about 180. We bought it based on 160K number. Wow. But it looks like it's that neighborhood is starting to appreciate a little bit. But yeah, for short sales, it doesn't make any sense but to buy the ones that literally Literally, or work on the ones that are literally for retirement on income. Listen every Monday at 1 p.m. for Heroes Talk Radio on Business 1110 KTEK. You can also call us now 866-544-7755. That's 866-544-7755. This is a special announcement yeah, for all Americans who owe back taxes to the IRS or state. The IRS is got, hiring thousands of new employees to go after right people now. just like you. If you owe over $10,000 in yeah. taxes or have unfiled <laughs> yeah, not, yeah, returns, yeah, that's just early for California, right? Your your bank accounts, garnish your wages, and take your home or business. It may watching. feel like yeah. an impossible situation, yeah, but, but I'll tell you what, on the replay, the attorneys and enrolled agents at U.S. Tax Show can help you get protected immediately. Stop the collection calls, IRS letters, bank letters, wage garnishments, and deal directly with the IRS. IRS, so you Huge don't have to. Event, Thanks to the new Fresh Start Initiative, day. U.S. Tax Shield has awesome. already saved it's our wild. clients millions of dollars in taxes, fines, and penalties. And now That's why we have an A-plus rating with a better business bureau. Out somewhere, so like call not now a real for your free, no-obligation yeah. consultation hey, to and have U.S. Oh, Tax Shield pull your <laughs> IRS and find out exactly what you owe and ride. give you a guaranteed uh, price quote to resolve your case permanently. Call now, 899 7503 I So I'm just like walking to the bathroom. I love your radio show. Stand by. This is business. <laughs> <You> love <laughs> this is really All right, fellas. Hot mics in like five. Yeah. Hot mics in five, four, Remember. three, two, one. This is Jason Bible, Right Path Real Estate. I'm here with uh, Alex Cedillo, and we're sharing uh, some some funny stories. Uh, so you were you were talking about before the break. You know, advice for new investors that is get in, just yeah. get in and and do it right. I mean, how many of these folks just you know, they want to do it. They want to. We run into. I mean, you're probably the same as I do. You run into a lot of people like I've always wanted to do that, and you're like, well, why aren't you? Yeah. One of the things that I would probably say is is it's important, and and I've heard different people like, well, you know, I'm not going to pay mentorship. I'm not going to pay for coaching. This, that, and the other, whatever. Well, one way or the other, you're going to learn, and, and you're going to pay for either it. Either you're going to go through the shortcut <clears throat> and get it right the the first few times, mm-hmm. whatever the case is, and get started on the fast track to get into yeah. that business and whatever that niche model is or whatever that you're trying to accomplish for your business model uh, versus trying to learn this stuff all on the internet, this, that, and the other, and then you're sitting there, you know, peddling for contracts and stuff online and all that kind of crap, and you have no idea you're getting somebody else's contract from Ohio, and you're trying to do it here in Texas, and it doesn't fly, and you'll get burned. I I have, uh, there's a a pretty big uh, internet group out there, internet forum, where you can get a lot of, quote, free real estate information, and I read through there, and I'm like, okay, that's not legal in Texas, that's not legal anywhere and then you go, you just start going through the post. This guy has no idea what he's talking yeah. about. These guys have never rehabbed a house. I mean, it's amazing to me how much bad information there is yeah. out there. I was telling our group this past weekend at our weekend retreat, I shared one tip with them, and I said, if I knew this, I would have saved forty grand on one yes. deal. Yes. And it's like that's so 
worth it, yes. right? It's like not to make. It's not that you're not going to make mistakes. Right. It's to stay out of making the really big ones. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And then streamlining your fast track into the business and start mm-hmm. doing deals a lot faster. Yeah. I mean, really, that's what it is. Yeah. Uh, there was a guy that I actually met at one of the networking events. Uh, I want to say it was probably about four or five months ago, something mm-hmm. like that. And uh, this guy had went to one of these uh, boot weekend boot camps with one of these flying gurus, yeah. you know, speaking and this, that, and other. Bought the five thousand dollar program, mm-hmm. then upped it to the thirty thousand dollar oh. program, and then he's asking me. He says, "What do I do? This, that, and the other." He says, "Where do I put that at? How do I do this?" I said, "You put that in your special provisions in your contract. Yeah. Depending on which contract you have, you, which contract do you have?" He goes, "What do you mean? What contract?" I'm like, <laughs> Who, "What do you mean? What you, contract?" You just pay thirty five grand. Exactly. And you can't. Isn't there somebody like phone a friend? Like they can yeah. help you out with Support. this? He goes, "No, no, no." He's. I said, "Don't you have a manual?" He goes, "Yeah." And he's, <clears> I said, "Well, it should be in your manual." He, I go, don't look through your tabs and see where, where that is mm-hmm. and look for your contracts and that kind of thing. And mm-hmm. you should have a blank area and special provisions. You can notate this. Yeah, yeah. This is how I would word it. He goes, he's just looking at me like a deer in headlights, has yeah. no clue. And so uh, I told him, I said, well, I said, how are you supposed to do your contracts when you find a seller? He says, well, they actually told me to contact a, a realtor. And I'm like, like, what? A realtor? Why are you going to contact a realtor? You know a realtor is not going to do a contract for you for free. Right, right, yeah. <laughs> so now, I mean, you know, and that realtor might not say, you know, I'm going to go ahead and try to list this instead. Exactly. You know? Or you call a realtor that's an investor, and they'll just get it under contract, exactly, right? Exactly, exactly. Oh. Now they're basically assigning it to you, and you don't even know it. You don't right. realize it because you don't understand the process. Mm-hmm. I'm like, yeah, you need to jump. I said, if you're making payments on a credit card or something, you better retract that. You know, yeah. you do, close you that deal wrong. fast. I said, you need to get somebody local. If you're in mm-hmm. Texas, you need to get somebody local in Houston, whatever that understands the rules, the state rules, regulations, and do everything from here. Mm-hmm. That's it. I, I, I'd always find it fascinating to me, and we've got we've got folks now that are all over the country, but one of the things you've got to learn is those local real estate rules, right? What are the yeah. local law? What's kind of the yes. basic? So my yeah. brother's buying a house in Seattle right now, okay. and he's going back and forth, and, and there's some things in how they do real estate that's kind of quirky. Like yeah. e- evidently, their appraisals are actually... Actually, the appraisers there are uh, employed by the state. So it's the state oh, that wow. actually does the appraisals, which is really interesting. Yeah. So there's all these kind of little nuances there. I mean, in general, a lot of the stuff's the same, right? But they can there keep are, track of your taxes. <laughs> yeah, that's right. They sure can. They absolutely can. So, well, then disclosure states versus non-disclosure states. Right, My right. guess is Washington's probably a disclosure state. So right. it's uh, it's all those little all those little uh, nuances. But to you know to go back to your to your first point, and that is you got to find somebody who knows what they're doing. Yeah, and there's yeah. a lot of these guys that have. Yeah. No clue that are teaching yeah. real estate classes. No clue what they're doing. Yeah. You know, they've got. Uh, this was my one of my favorite things when Tom and I first started out. We're uh, we're spending money on marketing. We're going out and doing deals, right? Yeah. And there was a guy that they had brought around. He was like in <clears throat> every single case study this one month, and he'd sent out two hundred yellow letters mm-hmm. and assigned a house and made a hundred fifty thousand dollar assignment. Nice. And here? I'm like, yeah, it was here in Houston. If you yeah. can believe that, it was crazy. It was here in Houston. And the whole time I'm sitting there thinking, man, I, we're not finding these kind of deals. Where yeah. are these kind of deals at? Yeah. And the sad thing is the guy's not in business anymore because he didn't realize that you got to spend real money in marketing. You have right. a real skill set in, in sales. What did he do with all that money he made? I have no idea. We know how these guys are. I mean, they, you know, they start making a little bit of money and they go out and spend money and go on vacations and do yeah, all kinds yeah. of stupid stuff. They don't run it like a real business, right? Yeah, yeah. So they're in the business and then they're and then they're out. So, all right, I've got a question here from Derek uh, from Facebook. It says, if you can make 10K in one month, a quick assignment, or 40K over four months, a rehab, which would you choose? Assuming you're doing deals and aren't dependent on that 10K for quick cash. So basically, would you rather duplicate 10K four times or just do one deal for 40 uh, speed and repetition. Okay, so forty. You yeah. If you don't need the money, that kind of thing, and you're yeah. not hard up for the cash flow and the chunks mm-hmm. of cash, that kind of thing, forty all day long. Yeah. Within a short period of time. I mean, I, I'm actually doing that right now with a a project. Same mm-hmm. thing. Yeah. So wait, do a little bit longer term. You know, we see the ones is when you when you look at a really big project, and we're about to start one. You know, we'll be in and out of that house in six months. I mean, right at the six month mark. Okay. You know, can you make you know 
thirty thousand dollars now or forty thousand dollars six months from now. I mean, at that point, I start thinking, yeah, yeah exactly. I might, Time I might and take money, a third. Right. Yeah. yeah. But when there's a spread of about a four uh, x there, yeah. I uh, I'd be tempted to just go ahead and flip the house, which is actually what we do a lot of now. Yeah. Uh, probably about ninety percent of our stuff is uh, uh, our flips. So let's see what else we got on here. Uh, looks like Ginger is going to get her second contract, so that's pretty nice, good. Congrats. Deal number two in the last two months. So we don't have any other questions here. If y'all want to ask us questions, seven one three seven eight five one eight one seven. So what are you working on now? Are you doing mostly wholesales, flips? What What are you up to today? I've changed the business model and what I'm doing. Um, I've actually stepped out of myself, uh, out of my way, so to speak, and what I'm doing. Uh, and I've changed the business model uh, to do more branding on the Mr. Deeds Buys Houses, Mr. Okay. Deeds House Buyers USA, uh, to do some stuff local uh, and abroad as far as national, that kind of thing. Okay. Uh, mainly Southern California and, and Texas in general, San Antonio, Dallas, Austin, and Houston. Uh, and I also started up a Flip Nation training program here locally, stuff mm -hmm. like that. So I kind of got a lot of irons in the fire. Mm -hmm. um, but from the business standpoint, I'd probably say I'm over 90% wholesale selling okay. uh, cuz I'm very finicky about picking and choosing the uh the properties for cash flow via it a note for uh, a cash flow on a note mm -hmm. or it's going to be a rental so and the location age you know what the numbers are multiple variables on that business model so that's how I vary it mm. you know whether it's in San Antonio and it's in the west side of San Antonio yeah. or or here in Houston west northwest whatever the case is and then there's some fix and flips that I want to do as well just to keep you know abreast of the market and the, mm -hmm. the 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 cost of everything just to have that experience especially since I started Flip Nation to be able to help train that part of it as mm -hmm. well so you're so, doing just stuff in Houston or you are doing San Antonio Dallas and some of the other markets I, I will be expanding into those markets okay. yeah I mean I've done some stuff one of my websites I had is says we do Texas uh, and then we do uh, uh, Southern California, Los Angeles. Okay. And I got people calling me from Georgia, mm -hmm. from Minneapolis, Minnesota, mm -hmm. but they're like hard up. You can hear the desperation yeah. and the heavy breathing on the other end yeah. of the line. And it's like, well, let me try this. You know, Let me at least try to help them out. If anything, th the goal for me was if I can help them out, whether I do business or not, What's the harm? Right, I help right. Them yeah, out of the absolutely. Situation. I can find somebody that can help them out. I refer them. They get it. Whatever. Mm -hmm. What well, turns out to be, I ended up assigning it. Mm -hmm. You know, if I can put it under contract, I do this. Bring somebody else in, and I make you know fifteen hundred bucks. I could care less. Yeah. You yeah. know, for that little time, I've helped somebody out, and so I've been. I started doing that kind of stuff. Uh, Florida, Georgia, and then Minneapolis, Minnesota. One in North Carolina. That was it, aside from California and mm -hmm. here. That was the only places that I've done but stuff. We've typically taken stuff like that because we get them from all over the place now. Yeah. And we'll refer them to somebody local. Yeah. Say, hey, talk to this guy. It's the local Home Investors franchise yeah. or somebody I know through one of our other networks. Say, hey, what? go talk to these folks and yeah. see if we can, see if they can get something solved for you. Yeah. So uh, best deals, worst deals, what other kind of advice you've got? You know, you've got 18 years experience under your belt. You know, do you like doing rentals or owner finance? or flips what's kind of your preferred exit strategy or do you even care every deal is different yeah um i, I am looking more at commercial these days mm -hmm. multi-tenant type commercial mm -hmm. um so that's why i'm just for me the time involved depending again on the variable of that property its location age this that and the other and the numbers Two uh minutes. pretty much determines what i'm gonna do mm -hmm. with that but like i said right now the business model is over 90 percent wholesaling let somebody else benefit from it i get a little small fraction who cares keep on turning and burning but at least it's getting me in front of people the mm -hmm. name the name brands hopefully tv commercials will be out next year yeah. that kind of, that's the goal so yeah. it's just really trying to put that together but i mean realistically like like we were talking about earlier mm -hmm. is Anybody that's starting into this, get on the damn phone. Yeah. Get in front of the people. Set the appointment. Go look at it. This, that, and the other. You never know what's going to come out of it. Yeah. I've walked into so many deals where they're like, I'm not motivated. I'm not one of those guys. I'm not desperate. You know, They're holding their ace card to their heart until mm -hmm. they get there and you get in front of them. They see that you're genuine. You're a person. You're trying to help them out. You're trying to figure some stuff out. Oh, 
One minute. You, you got a problem with the roof, this, that, and the other. Whatever yeah, and you, the case walk, is. you walk through the house and you go, holy It's cow. not going to pass inspection on, oh, yeah. on a FHA or right, whatever. Right, or right, right. So you're not going to be able to sell it on the MLS. Yeah. You know, this is your challenge. So then you start, you give them the options, but then you can take away from that based on that situation, and then they see you as that resource for the solution. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I think I think that's one of the things that's missed where you have an initial conversation with somebody. And most people don't realize that this is Americans' most valuable asset, right? Yes. So you're just not going to pick up the phone and buy it. Now, can you do that? Sure. Yeah. But it's sitting down. The real value you provide is sitting down with the seller and figuring out what the problem is and then putting together a solution for that for that problem. And yeah. it may not be a cash offer, maybe yeah. a sub two or something like that. So, all right, we get back from the break. We'll talk more about deals and doing deals and structuring deals. This is Jason Bible. I'm interviewing Alex Cedillo. It's Jason Bible, Right Path Real Estate. Yeah, Mike's off. Mm -hmm. I was going to say, these guys just need to really, I mean, really step up. Are you looking for an investor friendly general education. contractor for your Somebody investment local property? That understands then call Fast doing Track deals. Remodeling yeah. at 832 742 9992 or reach us on the web at fasttrackremodeling.com. I'm still going out there. Fast I like being out there specializes yeah. in turnkey remodeling and of really single family creative investment properties, whether it's a flip rehab or a rental rehab. Because then when I'm sitting there, we manage every aspect of a rehab from start to finish with a highly efficient standard. We're going through those scenarios, the case study, and this, that, and the other. Over the last five years, Fast Track has completed over 100 projects, which has helped us create. Them, three now they'll be able success. to make more money you right the right doing scope these of work so that everything gets it, done everybody wins train and maintain yeah quality well and you're actually out there in the field right doing it yeah. and all these guys are teaching real estate are not so out there doing fast. it yeah. you know it's so no funny we got our mastermind group no more on doing the monday work night and we're going to so give us a call today at 832 I, I'm putting together a new direct mail marketing campaign. Again, I'm going to go through all the metrics with them. Yeah. Like, hey, this is how much we sent out. This is our response rate. This is what we're going to buy from it. Com. So it, for them to be able to see that to Flatonia, and then also to see what all the other students Texas are doing is a, is is a lot of fun. Yeah. Because you do realize it, it is literally a, we got to send out the mail or whatever it is, or knock on the doors, and then you're going to get appointments, and then you're going to get offers, and then you're going to get contracts. I mean, it's a whole process. And as long as you're doing it, you'll you'll Your eventually get a deal. But what happens is when you stop doing it, yeah. you know, that's when the whole thing kind of falls apart. Clients on the risk so, needs associated with auto and home, here, investment properties, oh, commercial, and, and farm and ranch coverage. Give me some Their commitment yeah. <laughs> to quality and service allows them to compare multiple markets, coverage, and price to give you the best possible value. Right. Texas yes. General Insurance Agency appreciates so the opportunity doing all the variables to learn on how they can work for you. Like Call one of their like the probates and the non owner occupied and out of state and all that stuff. That's 713 622 5977. Or go to TexasGeneralInsurance.com. Okay. Join a group of hardworking investors willing to share their knowledge and experience with others. We're not just another guru driven club, we're a community of Houston's most successful real estate investors. Discover more at richradio.org. The Realty Investment Club of Houston, the Rich Club, has taught huh? more real estate investors than any other program in the state. Join the Rich Club and become part of the most informed community in Houston. Quickly discover your investment options. Receive the information you need to get started. Learn what it takes to avoid the pitfalls of real estate investment. You have questions? We have answers. If you're considering investments in Houston's real estate, then richradio.org is the quickest way to join the community and learn how to make money in today's market. Learn more about the education and community at richradio.org. Join our community to learn what it takes to make money in Houston. Visit richradio.org. That's R-I-C-H, radio.org. All right, 60 seconds, I'm guys. I'm Chen of the Hoover Institution for the Salem Media. Give a shout out to my boy. With the Izzy. intense focus on this year's presidential so election, yeah. it's easy to overlook he's some like, very he's, important he's, he's races for other up. offices around he's the country. He's eating up everything I In give him. He's taking notes, voters should pay careful just, attention to elections he's for the United States Senate. It. The Senate plays an important role in our system of government. For example... It votes to approve many of the president's nominees, including appointments to federal courts. Regardless of who wins the presidential election, the U.S. Senate will be an important check on our next commander in chief. For the last two years, Republicans have held the majority in the have U.S. Senate yet? and have held yeah. the line against President Obama. <laughs> and they've won some important fights on issues yeah. like Obamacare <laughs> right? and energy policy. Now, a number of good senators are running for re-election and engaged in tough Let's campaigns. See. In particular, Marco Rubio in Florida, Rob Portman in Ohio. Kelly Ayotte in New Hampshire, Ron Johnson in Wisconsin, and Pat Toomey in Pennsylvania have done good work during their time in the Senate. 
They deserve our support. All right, stand by, guys. Here. I'm Lon He Chen. This is business. Hot mics in five, four, three, two, one. Welcome back. It's Jason Bible, Right Path Real Estate. I'm here with Alex Adio. This is a short break, so if you got your questions, get them now. 713-8175-1817, sorry. Uh, let's see if we got any other questions here on the old Facebook. What other kind of parting wisdom would you give to our, our fine folks here on the radio show? I know you've got an event coming up Tuesday, right? Yes. Tuesday okay. morning, uh, 9.30 to 11. Uh, it's going to be at 1001 West Loop South, uh, Suite 870 Conference Room uh, up in the building. Definitely don't park in the front if you come out. Make sure you park in the garage because you will get told or you will get <laughs> <laughs> tagged with the yeah. nasty stick, big old window sticker. Now the and big stuff orange and sticker. Try yeah. to scrape that thing off. <laughs> um, but yeah, but it's just a free event for Flip Nation REI. We do the meetup groups, okay. you know, kind of stuff. And we do free training and stuff like that, help people out with a lot of these questions. Mm -hmm. Newbies, I'm going to go over basically the overall. Um, anybody get into the business, I think you should have an overview of the business and all the strategies mm -hmm. from short sales to landlording rentals, uh, your subject to's, uh, uh, private money lending, mm -hmm. uh, bird dogging, wholesaling fixtures versus rehabs, you know, which is the variable, mm -hmm. uh, stuff like that. So looking at that, I'm going to explain some of that stuff and why, if you don't really have any experience, this is why you should, you want to be the fisherman, mm -hmm. learn that because then you're not dependent on other people sending you crappy deals because they don't know what the hell they're doing. Well, and, I, and I'll tell you, you know, I got into this business. I joined a buy and hold group here in town. Okay. And the problem is all they ever taught was buy and hold. Yeah. Well, you don't have an infinite amount of capital. Even when you're using right. other people's money, right? Yeah. You still got to be able to source those deals, and wholesalers are not always the best place to get all your deals from. So exactly. they didn't teach any of this other stuff, yes. right? And that's when I started learning about all these other things, just like you did. Yeah. It's like you start going down these different avenues, and you're really what you're building is a toolbox, yes. right? It's not like this one wrench works on every deal, exactly. right? But you, you sit down with a seller and you go, okay, there might not be enough equity in this, but this house is in pretty good shape and you're not too far in arrears. Let's do a subject two deal, right? Right, right. So, but you don't go out for every appointment and say, well, I want to buy this sub two. And they say, well, there's no mortgage on it, right? Exactly, exactly, <laughs> exactly, exactly. So you've got to find those little things. So highly recommend uh, taking a look on uh, on Meetup. That's a great place. We're even posting some events there. Nice. R rumor has it we might have an event in November, another one in December. Nice. Uh, just as like a little open house. Two but um, you got just a minute or so left. What other, what other wisdom would you like to share with the, with the group? Uh, gee, I don't know. Read, 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 and get read out there lot. and get out there and do it. Get out there and do that. Go network, but stop networking. Also, you know, there's so much networking you can yep. do without doing deals. Uh, if you're an independent or individual and you're nervous about going out, because I know there's a lot of people that are nervous about talking to sellers and whether it's on the phone or going face to face and door knocking and whatnot. Try to network and find somebody that's a good talker, that's an outgoing personality, you know, respectable, whatever, semi-professional, that mm -hmm. kind of thing, and go out and door knock with them and do, you know, do some JVs together. Yep. Get the experience under your belt. You guys split the deals. You know, mm -hmm. you come to some kind of a co-wholesale agreement, whatever the case is, put that together, and let's say, let's do the next, you know, five, seven deals together. Mm -hmm. You know, now we can be out on the first deal if I don't like the way you work or whatever right, the case right. is, but One you minute. step out of your comfort zone you get out there you're doing it you're getting it done i, I had a guy young guy approach me at one of curtis's radio events when they yeah. were still doing those at, at wakefield and uh guy grabs me and goes i got no money but i got time I'm like just knock on some doors three months later he comes to me and goes i got a deal let me tell you about the deal and it was <laughs> it was awesome it works yeah. well i appreciate the time man i appreciate you having on the, have you on the show uh we will be back monday this is jason bible with right path real estate right path real thanks estate a lot radio. Find Jason and Tom Mike's at off. Right Path Real okay. Estate. All right, Nikki. Well, thanks a bunch. We'll see you Monday. All right, bye. You. Have a good weekend. All right, you too. Bye. Bye.